and you are listening to Subculture on CentralCoastRadio.com. Now, this was a feature that I wasn't expecting to do this week, but uh, we like to listen to our listeners here at Subculture. And uh, during the week, there was a, a pretty robust discussion going on on the Subculture Entertainment Twitter feed about the brand new stadium down in Tasmania and what it'll mean for the arts community of Australia. Now, the debate was and discussion was kind of sparked after an article um, that I wrote about talking to promoters um, and people within the music industry about what they will expect and what they would like to see happen with the new um, stadium on the Derwent River down in Hobart. Um, some people asked genuine questions. There was one guy who seemed to think that everything uh, we said was wrong, and that's his prerogative. Um, he can have that view. Um, I only got offended when he started to bring into question um, the professionalism of of our show and also things like that. So, but some of the questions that was asked were pretty important questions, and. I'd just like to give a little bit of an overview of uh, both the article that I wrote, but also um, things that have come out um, since then as well. Um, we decided the fairest way to go about talking about the new stadium was to actually canvas some of the um, promoters and, like I said, other people within the music industry that we work with quite often to find out their thoughts on it and uh, what their plans would be if the stadium went ahead, well, the stadium is now going ahead, so um, it comes to light a little bit more. Now, as we know at the moment, the stadium will hopefully be built and completed by 2028, 2029. So anything we talk about now is talking about the future. We don't know what inflation is going to be at like at that time. If you listen to our subculture after dark show, you will know that some bands don't really want to tour Australia at the moment because of um, the Aussie dollar and the cost of getting here and the cost of getting around um, with fuel and stuff like that. So we've kind of got to discount all of that stuff out of the equation when we have this discussion about what's going to happen in 2028, 2029. Now, what we know at the moment is that according to the Tasmanian government press release that was sent out to various outlets, including ours, they are hoping to have 44 events at the stadium every year. That's the uh, amount that they've uh, come to. I have absolutely no idea how they've reached that figure, but that's the figure that they are hoping will be a bare minimum. Um, that will include AFL. It will include cricket. It will include concerts, which is what we're going to discuss and there is also a very big push at the moment for them to try and get some rugby union, rugby league and soccer games um, potentially from Melbourne clubs on loan kind of uh, deal like what we see now with Hawthorne and North Melbourne, I guess, in the AFL playing down there. Now, when it comes to concerts, talking to various promoters, they've said that they feel, well, one in particular felt that one of the ideas that Tassie should really explore is to make this a really kind of boutique concert experience stadium. Now, what they meant by that is when we have these one-off concerts in Australia, Tasmania needs to start looking at stealing some of those concerts off New South Wales and Melbourne. As this promoter said, if Andre Rea was coming to Australia to do a, a Netflix special or something like that, Tasmania should be doing all they can to win that off New South Wales. At the moment, he said if that was happening, you would probably expect for it to happen at the Sydney Opera House or you would expect it to happen at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. But he said where Tasmania needs to really focus in on what they're doing with this new stadium is they need to be able to be in a position where they can steal things like that off other states. Now, he said the one thing that's really working for Tassie with, a, with an artist like Andre Ria is the fact that what is going to be around that stadium is going to be absolutely beautiful. He said, you think of the shots of Bell Reeve Oval that you see now during the cricket of the Derwent River. He said, now imagine Hobart by night, the lights reflecting off the Derwent, 
great cutaway shots for Netflix or whoever is filming the special. He said that kind of thing needs to be taken into account. Now, adding to that, he said one of the things that is going to be an issue for the Tasmanian Stadium is that they shouldn't be looking at artists that are going to attract young people. He said, given how many people live in Tasmania, and this is exactly what the point that the guy was making um, got into the argument on um, Twitter. So this will kind of address his concerns over that. Yes, Tasmania has a small population, about um, half a million or a bit above. Now, that didn't seem to be an issue um, in when I was living down there for artists like John Farnham and people like that to go through and do shows. So I don't imagine it's going to be too much of an issue for, for local artists. But for big international artists, he said what they need to do is do these one-off boutique concerts, not focus so much on the younger market, but focus on the market of people that can travel to Tasmania for these shows. So you start to put together, as he said, attractive little packages that include accommodation, include airfares, include the boat trip down include a few days going around the state, having a look at wineries, having a look at historical attractions, things like that. Package it all together along with going along to the show. And he said, that's what you need to be doing. You need to be looking at where that money is going to come from. He said, who can afford a $500 to a $1,000 trip like that? It's going to be people who uh, fairly established with work or have retired. He said that's the, the target market that they should go for. Now, one of the other promoters that we spoke to said what he would like to see have happen there is going back to a festival that used to be here in Melbourne called Rumba. Now, this is another point that this guy made on Twitter that we don't see stadium festivals here in Australia. And that's true, but Rumba was successful when it was in Melbourne and being managed correctly. Now he said what he would like to see have happen is this Tasmanian stadium be used for festivals like that. But he said for those festivals to work, they need a headliner that is not going to perform anywhere else. Now he gave me a great example. He said at the moment, Melbourne and Sydney and a couple of other cities are kind of in a little bit of a bidding war for Taylor Swift to come next year. Um, she's pretty much said that she's only going to do two cities when she's here. So the cities at the moment are in a bit of a bidding war. Now he said if Tasmania had their stadium built, what well, he would actually go to the Tasmanian government with this pitch. We'll do a festival. Taylor Swift will headline. Hobart will be the only city that she performs in in Australia. So if people want to go and see her, which we know that there'll be thousands and thousands of people around Australia who want to see her. They have to fly to Tassie. They have to go to the stadium in order to see her. Now, he said again, uh, he agreed with what the other promoter told us. No, it's not going to work for younger audiences, like this kind of thing. You're not going to be able to put on a show with artists like Listen Esso and people like that and have a festival at this Derwent Stadium and have that work with people wanting to fly in. It's got to be big international names. And he said, look, Taylor Swift, the, uh, someone of her calibre, it would probably work without a festival idea. But he said, if you were going to do a festival at this brand new stadium, it would have to be somebody of her calibre headlining it to get people to come there. Now, the the follow-up questions that I asked both of them was, how do you get that to happen? How do you work with a stadium and make sure that these kinds of things happen? And they said, it comes down to investment at the end of the day. Now, people do fly to Tassie for shows. Um, a couple of people mentioned to me um, about Dark Mofo and said, the thing about Dark Mofo is it works. About 80, 90% of people who attend are flying into Tassie. But of course, that's not going to fill a stadium like this because they have more alternative kind of artists. Um, personally, I know people who have flown across from Western Australia before to, to go and see Dark Mofo. He said even something like um, Blues Fest these days um, relies on tourism to get there. 
Now, this person that argued with us on Twitter, their argument was that, yeah, okay, so you have shows in places like Ballarat, Newcastle, but uh, they're within driving distance or only a couple of hours away from capital cities. The point that one of the promoters made was Tasmania also kind of falls into that because it is a very, very short flight from Melbourne to Hobart. Um, for anyone that's ever done that flight, you don't even have time to start watching anything because it's uh, kind of up and down. It's, it's all over in an hour. He said they've got to capitalize on that. They have to have artists there in Tassie coming in that people from interstate want to see, but they need to make sure that it is a boutique individual experience that people aren't going to get in other capital cities. And, and my, as I said, my question following that up was, how do you make sure that happens? He said the Tassie government has to put money into this. So they used an example. If this bidding war that's happening at the moment for Taylor Swift to see which city she's going to go to, Tassie would have to find out how much Melbourne is bidding, how much Sydney is bidding and go, you know what? We're going to throw an extra million dollars on top of that for your artist. If you make the artist want to perform there, he said, then it's pretty much a shoe in. So if you work with the label, work with the artist, throw a little bit of money on top, the investment will work. Um, one of the other um, promoters that I spoke to, they deal in much smaller festivals and they said it probably wouldn't be something that they would look at. If they did go to Tassie, they'd probably look at hiring a field somewhere or something like that. But they said the one thing that you can take away from stuff like that is that people are willing to travel. That's what that's what they do with their festivals at the moment. And they said that's what they would do if they had to do a festival in Tassie. But if you kind of do these boutique ones, they said people will travel there for that. So... But it all comes down to money um, at the end of the day. Like they said, the Tassie government, if they want to, they want this to work and they want to have concerts down there that aren't going to be anywhere else to make that work, they need to throw that extra million dollars on top for artists and record labels and then tourists will flock into the state and that is how you make the stadium work. So uh, hopefully that guy is listening right now um, and listening to what we're talking about with this. But um. Once we find out more information about the stadium, like whether it's going to have a roof, whether it's not going to have a roof, whether it's going to have a um, courtyard or something outside that can be used for concerts, which is something else that was talked about, we'll actually get some of the promoters on the show to talk about it and talk a little bit more about that then. But uh, like a lot of them said at the moment, it's just dreaming until we know what is actually going to happen with the stadium um, or how it's going to look and everything. But they are some of the ideas that they are playing around with. At the moment, and you are listening to Subculture on CentralCoastRadio.com, and we welcome all of that feedback on um, social media, so make sure you hit us up on social media.